But if those layers are different ages, why are there no erosion marks between the layers? They all just fit tight to each other like pancakes. I mean, don't you think if that one layer sat there waiting for the next one to come on top, it'd rain once in a while in 10 million years? Mm -hmm. Just go home and get a jar of dirt and put some water in it and shake it up, folks. It'll settle out of the layers for you in a few seconds. It's called hydrologic sorting. Many years ago, I was speaking in Union Center, South Dakota. Union Center is right there. It's not even on the map. And South Dakota puts everything they can find on the map just to fill in the white places. There were 40 people in the whole town. 38 of them came to church. I don't know where the other two were. Probably out pulling a calf, I reckon. But we had a great time. It was a wonderful little church out there in the country. The preacher said, hey, Brother Hofer, let's go down to Rapid City. They've got a museum with dinosaurs. I said, man, I like dinosaurs. Let's go. So we all drove down to Rapid City. We walked in the door, and this old fellow met us at the door, and he said, folks, I'm a guide here. Would you like me to give you a tour? We said, that would be great, sir. The first place we stopped on the tour was the geologic time scale. They've got it behind glass, all lit up. It's holy. Don't touch it. Okay. <laughs> We're standing there, and the guide said, now, folks, this layer of rock you're looking at right here is about 70 million years old. And it's so cool because they always get that sanctimonious tone in their voice, you know. 70 million years old. Oh. <laughs> My daughter raised her hand. She said, uh, sir, how do you know that layer is 70 million years old? He said, that's a good question, honey. He said, we tell how old these layers are by what kinds of fossils are found in them. They're called index fossils. She said, okay. We walked around the other side. We're standing over here. And the guide said, now, folks, these bones you're looking at are about 100 million years old. <laughs> My daughter raised her hand again. She said, uh, sir, how do you know the age of those fossils? He said, well, honey, we tell the age of the fossils by which layer they come from. <laughs> she said, uh, sir, when we were standing over there, you told me you knew the age of the layers by the bones, and now you're telling me you know the age of the bones by the layers. She said, isn't that circular reasoning? I thought, wow, a chip off the old block. <laughs> that guy had, had the strangest look on his face. It was almost as if he were thinking. <laughs> he looked at my daughter. He looked at me. I wasn't about to help him. <laughs> I thought, man, this is going to be good. I got to hear this. He looked back at my daughter. He said, man, you're right. That is circular reasoning. He said, I never thought of that before. That poor fellow drove 50 miles one way that night to hear me speak in Union Center, South Dakota. The crowd swelled to 39. <laughs> we set up a chair in the aisle. Afterwards, he talked to me for almost, almost an hour. He said, Hovind, is everything I believe about geology wrong? I teach this stuff at the college. I said, oh, no, man, I like geology. Are you kidding? You've learned the names of all the minerals. Huh. That's a good trick, folks. There are 1,200 minerals. Some have names about this big. I said, you've learned the hardness test, the Rockwell test, the scratch test. I said, no, sir, I like geology. I like rocks and minerals. I have a huge fossil collection, a big mineral collection. I like, I like minerals. I said, but the part about them being different ages is all baloney. But he doesn't dare quit teaching it because he'll lose his job. See, people who don't support the evolution theory lose their job in public schools. That's the way it works. We cover more on that on video number seven. It's a carefully protected state religion. It's all based on circular reasoning. I'll show you. This textbook tells the kids on page 306 to date the, fo ro the fossils, or date, I'm sorry, date the rocks by the fossils. On the next page it says, date the fossils by the rocks. Circular reasoning, this is silly, okay? This guy says, the intelligent layman has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply. This guy says, I can think of no cases of radioactive decay being used to date fossils. If they tell you they date the fossils by carbon dating or potassium argon or one of those other ones, they're wrong. That's not how it's done. Fossils are dated by which strata they come from. Strata are dated by which fossils they contain. Circular reasoning. Radiometric dating would not even be feasible if the geologic column had not been erected first. This guy says, the rocks do date the fossils, but the fossils date the rocks more accurately. I think the cheese done fell out of his sandwich, folks, okay? 
If somebody charges you with circular reasoning, here's how they answer them. They say, the charge of circular reasoning can be, in stratigraphy can be handled several ways. It can be ignored. It's not the proper concern of the public. In other words, it's none of your business how we do it. Or it can be denied by calling down the law of evolution. It can be admitted as a common practice or avoided by pragmatic reasoning. But the fact is, it's all based on circular reasoning. I like to ask the evolutionists, I'll say, fellas, your geologic column contains limestone quite a few different places. I mean, if I just handed you a piece of limestone and said, how old is it? How would you know if it's 100 million year old Jurassic limestone or 600 million year old Cambrian limestone? I mean, they're both limestone. How would you know the age of it? It's, oh, that's easy. We would tell by the index fossils. Precisely my point. This textbook shows the kids a trilobite. And it says a trilobite's a good index fossil. If you find a trilobite, it probably lived five to 600 million years ago. I don't think so. Somebody found a human shoe print where the guy had stepped on and smashed a trilobite. They asked geologists all over, how could a human step on a trilobite if trilobites lived 500 million years ago? One guy said, well, maybe, maybe aliens visited the planet 500 million years ago. <laughs> hey, those aliens will do it every time. Another guy said, maybe there was a large trilobite shaped like a shoe that fell on a small one. Oh, hey, there are some big trilobites, okay, but they're not shaped like a shoe. Second Peter's got the best story about that one. The scoffers are willingly ignorant. You'd have to have help to be that dumb. You couldn't do it on your own. Trilobite had the most complicated eyeball ever. And that's supposedly one of the first creatures to evolve in the Cambrian explosion. I mean, come on, it's got an eyeball incredibly complex. Trilobites did not live millions of years ago. There could be some trilobites still alive. There certainly are isopods, which are very similar, except one piece shell instead of three lobes. Otherwise, could be a descendant, a mutant. Which is, by the way, which is a loss of information, not a gain. This textbook shows the kids a fossil graptolite. This is the New York State fossil. It says graptolites lived 410 million years ago. Only problem is they found graptolites still alive. Now, if they're still alive, couldn't they be found in any rock layer? Hmm. This one shows the kids the Devonian period. It says this is from 325 million years ago. It has lobe finned fish. They got a short leg and then the fin. Well, this is silly. Lobe finned fish are still very much alive today. It's called the coelacanth. And when they first found the coelacanth still alive in 1938, they said, wow, would you look at this? They survived for 325 million years. It never dawned on them one time to question the geologic column. That thought never crossed their brain. This lady wrote a book about it, A Fish Caught in Time. Yes, boys and girls, this is our own great uncle, 40 million times removed. I'm not sure I can help somebody like that.